What's up, people? This is Nature Girl 30 here, and this is my SmackDown review for April 20th. Now, I have to say that this SmackDown was better. It was much better than Raw. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This SmackDown pretty much came right back from London, right where Raw was. But I have to say that, like I said before, this SmackDown was way better than Raw. I actually did like... Okay, I'm going to go into what I like first, and then I'm actually going to go into what I don't like. Now, what I really do like about this whole thing is the fact that they actually did bring in a lot of new talent from NXT. I loved it. With Damian Sandow, with uh, with O'Neal and Young, I mean, they brought in a lot of good people with Rayback, Ryback, I said Rayback, but Ryback. Even though I really don't like the way they set up Ryback's performance, how they have a whole bunch of people from backstage come out and watch his, uh, watch his performance and him going all roid rage on you, you know, I mean, that was kind of weird. But the fact is, it makes me really happy that they're incorporating talent from NXT and actually put them on TV and getting them, giving them their their few minutes due. I mean, they work hard to get to where they are, and it really does make me happy that they're incorporating a lot of new talent from NXT. Another thing, I loved the introduction. I loved Daniel Bryan when he actually came out and did his little promo, and I also loved the fact that AJ was involved. Yeah, I did kind of create a lot of a, a lot of flack from having AJ involved the first time, but but there is a method to my madness. I am liking this because I really do feel that they're going to make her heal. Now, I don't. I mean, AJ is too cutesy. I'm sorry, she's far too cutesy. She's far too vulnerable looking. There has to be some kind of a lioness in there somehow. And seeing how the, she kind of came out, all that craziness kind of came out with her match with Natalia, and Natalia's not a face, she has to go heel. And I think she'll be a better heel than a face. She won't be so whiny. She won't be so vulnerable. She won't be so weakish. And it's not that. It's like she just, she's far too cutesy. She needs to have somewhat of an edge. She really does. And I really would, and her in ring skills are kind of mediocre. So having a little bit to an edge to her character will actually bring out a lot more and maybe kind of up in her talent a little bit. Maybe it'll give her a little bit more confidence. So I really am looking forward to her being a heel, and I hope she becomes a heel at uh, Extreme Rules, which is how I feel. They actually did show a little bit, a few segments from Raw. You know, they always have the Raw rebounds, blah, we all knew that. They also showed the Brock Lesnar segment, we all knew that. So what's the point of getting into that? But the one thing I actually do like is some of the matches. I actually... Did like Alberto Del Rio versus The Big Show. I like that match. Because Alberto Del Rio, good grief. He came out in a 2010 Ashton Martin. That was, oh, that car was gorgeous. But regardless, I really did like that match. I really did like the way it started off. And even though Cody Rhodes did interfere, which makes me happy because they're finally incorporating Cody Rhodes a lot more in this feud. Since The Big Show's been making fun of Cody Rhodes as of, as of late, he finally has come back and retaliated from everything that the Big Show has done to him, which is something I wanted him to do for a while now, and I'm so happy he's starting to do it. <sighs> so it makes me really happy how he came out and he kind of interfered in the match and kind of, you know, did, caused Big Show to lose the match, which was a great setup to the main event, especially the, the six-man tag event that was actually going to be set up, at the, um, set up at the end of the night. But, um... The one segment that I didn't know that I would that I would like, that I really did like, was the Funkasaurus. I liked the Funkasaurus segment, and the reason why I liked it was the fact that he brought it. I mean, you wouldn't think the Hornswoggle, this little itty bitty dude, would have some moves to bust, and this he actually was busting some moves, and I liked it. I really did think that segment was funny. I think it was downright hilarious. But when I saw Hunico in there, I'm like, yeah, it's the squash match. But it kind of went on a little longer than expected. It wasn't five seconds like it usually was. And it was quite entertaining, and I liked it. I really liked it a lot. I kind of thought I would see Santino, but since I didn't, I guess they're not going to do the whole tag team thing. I guess they kind of skipped out on that. But I thought the whole segment was cute. It was quite entertaining, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And... Yeah, they had a lot of backstage segments, especially with um, Theodore Long. And it kind of makes me sad what happened to poor Teddy, how he's starting to go back to how he was when Vicky Guerrero happens to be a, with, end up becoming a GM. And now he's becoming a lackey. And that really did make me sad because I think that Tay Long is a lot more than that. And if Tay Long can't have that job, I think they should have just let him leave. 
instead of humiliating the guy. They've done it far too many times. There's really nothing for him or the storyline, in my opinion. But it did set up for O'Neal and Young to come out and actually become a new tag team, and they actually had that match with the Usos. I enjoyed that match a lot. I thought that match was going to be instant, done, you know, whatever. But on the real, that was a really great tag team match, and it benefited both parties. It benefited the Usos because it didn't make them look weak, and it benefited um, O'Neal and Young because it made these guys look strong. I mean, especially them being newcomers, I really think that it was a great match. It didn't, I mean, it really bounced things out. It didn't make the Usos look weak, and it made um, Young and O'Neal look a lot stronger. Their in-ring skills aren't that bad. It's pretty It's pretty good, especially for guys that are new. You know, I, I really enjoyed that match, and I really think they did a good job in having O'Neal and Young win. I was really looking forward to that, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to them Try to find a place for them and actually have them move on. I was looking forward to that. And I still am. But Ryback, I like Ryback, but he just seems too roidy to me. It's just like, okay, sure, you're a powerhouse. That's great. But he's a psychotic powerhouse. I mean, he comes out there and he just decimates people in the ring. But he decimates these random dudes that you find in the towns that you're in. He doesn't have any competition. In my opinion, instead of destroying these amateurs that come out there and actually want to have a name for themselves, he needs to have somebody within his same fight range, within the same class, and stop having him squash these random people. Have him have some actual talent coming out there, somebody that can put him over, somebody that can put Ryback over, and not have these random guys like this poor guy from London that came out there as an amateur get decimated in front of his mom. I mean, dude, if you want to put Ryback over, have somebody within his same caliber to come up there and fight against him. That will make Ryback look good, and that will also make the guy against him look good if it hasn't matched longer than maybe three minutes, and it's also within the same fight range. It would actually make them both look good, but I don't know what they're going to do. They're probably going to have a few squash matches like they did with Bruce Clay, and they're going to probably try to find something with his character and probably push him forward, and I hope that's what they do. But moving on from there, the main event of the night, I loved this. I really did. The six-man tag match, Daniel Bryan, Cody Rhodes, and Mark Henry versus Randy Orton, Sheamus, and before, it was actually the Great Khali, but then he got taken out by Cody Rhodes, which I think was probably a brilliant move on his part. And he brought in the Big Show. I'm sorry. It was the instant setup for the Big Show because the Big Show got screwed over by Cody Rhodes. So he has to screw over Cody Rhodes in the six-man tag match. Now, I thought that was a great setup for the Big Show to come in. It was actually great for all the feuds that have happened because it's funny how the Big Show was there. He feuded with Cody Rhodes. He's feuding with Cody Rhodes now. And then he feuded with um, Mark Henry way back when. And it, it kind of gives you a taste on how Extreme Rules is going to be. I don't know whether or not Mark Henry is in it or doing anything with it. But still, it kind of gives you a taste on how the past and the present kind of come together. I love the way this match went. Everything was pretty fluid. Everything went very well. The one thing I can say about Mark Henry is Mark Henry is still trying to play that dominant role. There is nothing dominant about Mark Henry anymore. I'm sorry. He got his clock clean by three people in the ring. He is constantly being decimated night after night after night, but he's giving chance after chance after chance. I don't get it. He's not dominant anymore. He needs to work his way up. I'm not saying he needs to turn face. He needs to have a little bit of pride, but the guy is not a dominant monster anymore. He's not a monster. He can't be taken seriously. I'm sorry, he can't, in my opinion. But regardless, regardless of how Mark Henry's character is now, that match was actually great, and I was, and I really enjoyed myself this entire night. So I have to say that this SmackDown for tonight is definitely a solid B. They did a good job in trying to incorporate extreme rules. They did a good job with all the matches, especially the way they set up the feuds. I really did like the set, uh, the, the backstage segments as well as the Funkasaurus segment. Very entertaining. So this SmackDown was a solid B. That's my verdict, and I'm sticking to it. This is Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace. Later.